What does the Bible say about dealing with immoral people? Well, throughout this video, I'm going to cover this topic with three key points. Number one, I'm going to define what an immoral person is. Secondly, we're going to cover 10 Bible verses about immoral people, which are listed on the screen. And thirdly, I'm going to give you my final thoughts. What does all this mean and how do you apply this to your life to protect yourself from such people? With that said, let's start with a Bible verse that encompasses the overall theme of this topic. Matthew 7 verses 17 through 20 states, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. And this is the Lord Jesus Christ himself speaking on this matter. Translation. Don't be fooled by people's words. Don't be fooled by people's appearances. Always look in what they do. Actions tell you everything. Whether you are a man watching and single and you want to find a good woman, look at their actions. Ladies, you want to see how a man really feels about you? Look at what he does. Look how he treats you. Look at the quality of friends you have in your life. Those who are close to you, observe. If I give you a lemon tree and I claim it's, it gives lemons, but it gives you apples, out of the branches, then I'm lying to you. It's actually an apple tree. Okay? You will always know people by their fruits. A good tree can never produce bad fruit. Something rotten, corrupt, evil, wickedness. Because the foundation is in righteousness, in love and truth. Right? Same goes for the opposite. You'll know them by their fruits. So what is an immoral person? An immoral person is genuinely de generally described as someone who engages in actions or behaviours that are contrary to God's moral standards and teachings. Okay, This includes individuals who commit certain sins that we all know of, such as adultery, right, betrayal, infidelity, fornication, sleeping around, hooking up, theft, they're stealing, they're liars, they, they worship things that they shouldn't. Instead of God, they are jealous of what other people have. They're drunk, drunkards, right? They're addicted to certain things and all other forms of unrighteousness. Immoral people are often depicted as those who reject God's commands, pursue wickedness and lead others astray from the path of righteousness. This may also be characterized by their lack of repentance and refusal to acknowledge their wrongdoings. Sounds a bit like narcissists and emotionally immature people, does it not? And the whole point is this. When it comes to relationships in marriage, nowadays, you have free will to choose who you want to marry. Back in the day, parents and grandparents would come together if you were interested in a lady. They'd set up a match. They'd be matchmakers and they'd vet for you. They'd help you assess whether the woman you were choosing were good for you. Same goes for the ladies watching. It would happen the same way with men. Nowadays, in our generation, most of the boomer generation have terrible marriages. They haven't taught their children well. And their children's children, which is our generation, people in their 20s or 30s and such, have usually a knowledge gap. And they've been bombarded by cultural Marxism, feminism, red pill, and other forms of degeneracy that has well, divided them against the opposite sex. It's oftentimes led them away from godly values. So when it comes to relationships and choosing someone good for them, or even choosing friends, people don't know what they're doing. And you would think, in a society where no one's putting a gun to your head, there's no forced marriages, there's no arranged marriages, you can choose who you want to be with, people are choosing wrong at an alarmingly high rate because they lack understanding. This has to be turned around. 
And by you being aware of what an immoral person is, well, you can protect yourself from ever involving yourself. That is the point. Okay. So there are 10 Bible verses that I've selected for this video that discuss avoiding immoral people. Okay. Here we have the first three on screen. Bible verse number one. Proverbs 4, verse 14 through 15. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not into the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. Very black and white. If you see wicked people, you see men doing evil things, don't go near them, don't get involved with them, don't try and be their friends, don't be curious, just turn away and avoid. Oftentimes, when you're in a situation with evil people, or you know of evil people, you know there's bad things, illegal, immoral things that they're doing, just don't associate with them. Stay away. Don't get involved. So this verse advises against entering, following the paths of wicked people, to be associated with evil men. Whether it's in your friendships, in your relationships, career, business, avoid being influenced by those who engage in immoral behaviour. If you see your friends doing drugs, cheating on the women in their lives, you know, they let themselves go, they're overweight, they're obese, or maybe they're very vain, uh, they're taking steroids, right? They're insecure, they have serious problems, and they don't want to get help. You should be very careful of involving yourself with such people. Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. If your friends, guys, are cheaters and liars and thieves and they're lazy, they don't want to see you succeed. They don't want to see you do good. They don't want to see you happy or glowing. Who's to say they're not going to steal life to you? Who's to say they're not going to betray you? Protect yourself. Avoid such people. Instead, distance yourself from these negative influences and turn towards righteousness. This is what this verse is telling us, very black and white. The second verse, which is one of my favourite Bible verses, is 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. And this can be translated into other Bible versions. I'm using the King James Version for all of these verses, for anybody wondering. So this is often translated as, you know, bad company corrupts good behaviour, good morals. This is what this really means. This verse warns against the corrupting influence of evil communication, evil association. It emphasises the importance of surrounding oneself with positive influences and avoiding relationships or friendships that promote immoral behavioural values. We've all heard the saying, tell me your friends and I'll tell you your future. You know how they say a picture speaks a thousand words? which is true. If you look at who someone associates with, it gives you a free background check. You're only going to associate with people that are similar to you. And if you've been around people for a long time, you kind of become like them. Tony Robbins, I mean, that's a very good quote as well. You're the average of the five people you hang around the most. If you hang around five guys that are gym goers and they're healthy, they care about their nutrition, you're going to be the sixth guy. You know why? Because they're going to push you up to that level. They're going to bring you up with them. If you're around five guys that are all about business, stocks, real estate, crypto, whatever, right? passive income, finances, they're going to still only teach you nuggets of wisdom and value and they're going to raise your standards and help you be a little bit better, right? But the same is true for immoral people. If you're hanging around guys that are going to the club every weekend, drinking, partying, smoking, dating dirty, unclean women, you could say. Men who don't want to know God. Men who don't care about scripture. Men who don't care about marriage or love. Men who are selfish and materialistic. Well, you might at first not be like them, but the more and more you spend time around them, it slowly chips away at your pre-existing values. And you think, okay, they do it, I guess I can be like them. And you slowly fall down into that path. 
and one day you wake up six months a year later and you're just like bad company corrupts good morals the only way to safeguard your integrity is to avoid such people it's really that simple instead hang around people that are going to elevate you to another level that have good morals that have good standards look at their lives look at their track record look if you met a woman guys and all her friends were party girls club sluts as the term goes you don't need any more information than to know what sort of woman she is just by looking at her friends right there are exceptions of course but the general rule stands so how do you think a woman a godly woman is going to see you what is she going to think of you when she finds out that your friends are all you and your mates are all clubbing on the weekend you're all hanging around promiscuous women you're drinking you're lazy and that's what she sees in all of your friends and she knows you're close with them she's going to disqualify you a godly woman has standards and doesn't want a man like that you need to do a clean inventory of the quality of people you have in your life this this one is really important I like how it says at the beginning, be not deceived. Because you think, oh, I'm different. I can hang around those people and it's not going to influence me. It's, it doesn't work that way. It always ends up influencing you. Are these people bringing you closer to God? Or are they bringing you further away? That's how you can judge it, righteously. If your friends, gentlemen, aren't talking about business, about career, about marriage, about family... They don't want to know about God. They don't want to expand their horizons. They don't care about, you know, good good things like love and family and honour. You have a problem. Because if they don't care about those things, I can tell you exactly what they care about. Drugs and alcohol, pornography, masturbating, sleeping around, being lazy. They have no ambition. They have no drive. Complaining, whining, moaning, overweight, out of shape, prideful. Is that the sort of person you want to hang around? Because that's a reflection of who you are, if you associate with them. The third verse, Proverbs 13, 20. I love this one. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Makes it very simple. This proverb highlights the impact of companionship on one's character. And this verse is specifically related to friendship, mentorship, uh, brotherhood, the men you associate with, okay? It stresses the importance of choosing wise and righteous friends who will positively influence your life, which is what I was saying before, rather than associating with those who lead you astray. It's really that simple, guys. Let's say you're somebody who quits drinking. And you tell your friends, hey guys, I don't drink anymore, but they all drink. Observe, what do they say? Are they like, that's okay, bro, it's fine. Or do they tell you, come on, man, don't be weak, come on. And they're, they're like peer pressuring you to continue on with the sin that they indulge in. That's Those are people you need to avoid. Because they're dragging you down with them. Go tell your friends that you want to start a business. Go tell your friends that you want to start working out. Go tell your friends that you want to learn more about relationships. Maybe you're watching this channel, right? You're learning relationships. See what they say. Are they happy to see you grow and develop yourself? Or are they like, ah, you don't need any of that. Why do you need to work out, bro? Why do you need to learn more about relationships? It doesn't matter. Hey, man, why, why, why would you start a business? That's never going to work out. Listen to those little things. You want to be around men that have succeeded in something. Men that are ambitious. Men that have drive. Men that are going to bring you up with them. Men that actually care about you and want to help you be better. Because that's what masculine men do. Why are you associating yourself with guys that ain't going anywhere? They don't care about anything. They're hedonistic. They don't value truth. They don't value right from wrong. They don't understand good or evil. They don't care about lies or truth. They're just living for the weekend. Avoid guys like that. Cut them off, honestly. One of the best decisions I made was removing people like that from my life throughout my teens and my early 20s, getting, getting them far away from me. You know, 
I know a lot of people back when I was younger, oh, I told them, oh, I'm going to start a business. You, know, you don't need to do that. You don't know what you're doing. Now he's laughing. You know, I love them, but you love them from far away. And there are certain people in your life that if, they're not, if they don't want you to grow, if they truly do not want the best for you, you have to start asking serious questions to yourself. Why are they in your life? What value do they really give? Is there a reciprocal relationship where you're both mutually helping each other? There's actual love and connection. What do you have with your friends? Are you going down to the pub on the weekend talking about the football match? Or are you sitting there talking about things that actually matter? Hey man, how are you doing? How is your health? How's your mental health doing? How's your relationships going? Where do you see yourself in the next five or ten years? Have you picked up a Bible yet? How's it going for you? Do they actually care about you? Or you just, do you just have a superficial connection? He that walks with wise men will be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. If you hang around five fools, you'll be, the, you'll be fool number six. There's a theme with these verses, isn't there? Very interesting stuff. Verse number four. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? This is a big one for the people watching who are Christian, who are right with the Lord. More specifically, this verse isn't just about friends, because you don't you want to you can still have friendships but be mindful of it. As a Christian, you should not be dating or considering marrying an atheist, someone who doesn't love the Lord. Very dangerous stuff. This verse cautions against being unequally yoked with unbelievers. And it talks about the importance of having shared values and beliefs in your relationships. So ask yourself, guys, the woman you were with or the woman you were getting to know if you're in that stage of dating. Does she love God? Is she willing to know God? If the answer is yes, great. If the answer is no, what are you doing with her? Look at your friends. Do not be unequally yoked with them. Some of you guys wouldn't be friends with someone who has a different football team. Some of you guys wouldn't be friends with someone who's a liberal or a conservative, like whatever side it is, right, that you guys are on, on politics, right? But then you'll sit there and be with people that don't even have the same values as you. Why? You just have to, if that's the case, you only limit yourself to some superficial, materialistic type of transactional friendship. There's no bond. There's no love. There's no connection. What are you doing with those people? You don't even believe the same things. And you're probably too scared to even talk about what you really want to discuss. Things in politics, things about God, things about what's happening in the world. Because what if you say the wrong thing to them and they're on the, they believe something else? And now your friendship's gone. Well, then you know your friendship's built on a lie. You've got to start asking yourself these questions. What values are your friendships built on? I wouldn't be around guys that cheat on their girls. I wouldn't be around guys that believe in polygamy. I'm not going to associate with men that think cheating's okay. Because it's disgusting and it's immoral. They're cheating on their woman, they're going to cheat on me. I don't want friends like that in my life. I want men that are monogamous. I want men that are Christian. I want men that have their values locked in. They know themselves very well, who have a healthy self-esteem. Men that love God. Men that care about truth. Men that I can have an intellectual conversation on. That's my standard. What is yours? You tell me. This verse is encouraging you to seek fellowship with those that have the same moral convictions as you, the same faith. That's how it's meant to be, gentlemen. Look at your friends. When you talk to them about God, are they open to it or not? What about the woman you're with? I see so many Christian men trying to date Muslims. They're, de they're going, or they're going for women that are atheist. And I tell them all the time, there's millions of beautiful, godly Christian women out there and you're going for an atheist. Well, you don't trust God's word enough that if you take action properly, he's going to supply you with a godly Christian woman that you have to go find a non-believer. There's exceptions, sure. But so many, you guys ain't doing it out of exceptions. You're doing it out of low standards and lack of faith. Your standards, 
will pour out into every area in your life. From a relationship perspective, you can always gauge the quality of someone by the quality of relationships they have. What sort of friends do they allow into their life? Tell me about their woman. Hmm? Tell me about what sort of um, relationship they have to maybe their boss or their clients, their customers, their business partner. You look at these things and you can tell a lot about someone. What does it say about you? Number five. Make no friendship with an angry man and a furious man thou shalt not go. With a furious man thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare into thy soul. Translation. Stay away from angry men because they have no self-control. And when you are around someone who's angry, they are most likely somebody bitter, prideful. And when they are in an emotional and reactive state, men have great power not just to create and do good, but when they are angry and they're immoral, they can do serious harm and destruction to those around them. And you need to take serious stock of the quality of men you have in your life that are your so-called friends. Okay, I just got an email earlier from an ex-client telling me about he met some girl outside at a bar and his one of his friends is also hitting on the same girl and trying to separate him from her. And like this is the quality of friendship some of you guys let into your lives. Guys that are in competition with you, guys that don't want to see you win in business, guys that don't want to see you have a good woman because they want to steal her from you. You guys really need to take a look at the people in your life. These are the angry men you need to watch out for. The incels. What happens when you get a win or a victory in your life? Look how they react. Do they celebrate? Are they happy for you? Are they silent? Are they non-reactive? Do they talk about themselves? You've got to look at these things. There's, there's a lot of men out there that you think are friendly, but they're not. They're faking it. And a lot of it comes out with their anger. Listen to these men speak. Listen to their problems. They'll tell you everything. It, they're always angry towards women. That tells you something. They're always angry about money. Tells you something else. They're angry about their health. They're angry about that. They're blaming other people. That is a man that doesn't take accountability. That is a man that has low self-esteem and is not in a good state. And if they're not in a good state, they're a danger to you and everyone around. They need help. But be careful. Be really, really, really careful of having a close friendship with someone who's very angry or who has low impulse control. If they lack that self-control, they could lash out and do serious wounds. So again, instead, choose friends who exhibit self-control, have good attitudes, they're chill, they're easy to get along with, men that are drama-free, so that you can maintain a healthy friendship. And for the ladies watching, I don't even have to tell you Stay away from angry men. Guys that lose it and get aggressive really quickly. They start hitting a the wall. They start breaking something, making threats. It's only going to get worse and worse. Be really careful of those men. Because they're immoral. Number six. Verse number six. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Now this passage is an interesting one. It says, be not envious against evil men, and have, you shouldn't even want to be with them. Have you guys ever seen someone super successful and famous? When you're a young kid, you look up to them, you want to be like them, you wish you had what they have. You see other people living, living the life, only to see it come crashing down late years later, and you think, wow, thank goodness I didn't you know, turn out like them. Be very careful with that. The Bible says focus on your own business. You shouldn't want what other people have. And this verse, a good way to look at it as is for the younger men watching. Look at all these Andrew Tates and these other degenerates. You can go back to my videos of 2022 where I'm calling out Andrew Tate. One of my videos about why modern men are deceived, misled by lust. I remember when someone told me about Andrew Tate back in 2022. I did one Google search and I find the website of Andrew Tate with his cam girl business. 
and this is the standard that some men look up to. This guy made his money from scamming lustful men and exploiting vulnerable women. This is a degenerate, controlled opposition. But some guys look at him as a masculine hero and all this. This guy's not a role model. He's an evil man. Some men, they're jealous. They want to be like him and they want to be with him. They want to be around him, right? Be his bro, learn from him. The Bible says you shouldn't want to be like people. You should not even want to be like men like that. You should never envy evil men because they're going to get what's coming to them. And you should never even desire to be close or associated with them because it will come back on you. All the people I know that looked up to Andrew Tate, they all have miserable relationships. Their lives suck. Or they've fallen back into a degenerate pattern. Because they, instead of following God's righteousness and godly examples of good men, they're following a degenerate. You get what you are. These people are manipulative. And there's other influences online I can mention. But I've just mentioned that one because he's a popular one. All sorts, right? This could go for politicians and leaders in your country. It depends what it is. But these people are wicked. These people are evil. Their lips are lying to you. A simple Google search on Andrew Tate. Anybody can, with, a, with an above average IQ knows what I'm talking about. This guy's scum and everybody's been known for years. And it's slowly, slowly coming out. It's only young fatherless boys that think he's a real man. But again, be really careful of what you wish for. Don't You should not want to look up or associate with those people because God is going to bring you down. Because that's going to lead you to destruction. Instead, you should seek friendships and look up to mentors who uphold moral values. And as Jesus said before in Matthew 17, 20, at the end of the verse that we covered at the top here, you'll know them by their fruits. Look at people's values. How does it contribute to your life? Look at their own lives. Do you want to be like them, really, or not? If you see a godly man and he's doing something that you would like to achieve, follow in his footsteps. If not, and there's red flags, there's things that ain't adding up, stay away. Number seven. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. For his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law does he meditate day and night. This psalm is beautiful. It contrasts the, the blessings of people who, who, who do what is right. They walk with God. They, they care about following after truth and doing the right thing. And God calls these people blessed you're a blessed god to god he will bless you when you stay away from immoral ungodly people when you disassociate and remove yourself from people that are scornful right angry bitter godless because there are certain consequences that come from associating with godless people which i've been covering through the other other bible verses but instead, choose friends and companions who delight in God's law, people who value truth, people that are right with God so you know they're going to be right with you and they're going to encourage you to grow spiritually. And that's the sort of man that is being given blessings, biblically speaking, not the immoral one. Number eight, Proverbs 9 verse 6 states, Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. Forsake means to completely reject someone, right? So this is verse is telling you to just simply reject foolishness and instead pursue understanding. You should be willing to sit down, shut your mouth and learn from good things. In your friendships, in your relationships, this is the importance of, under, of surrounding yourself with people who value wisdom and knowledge as they will positively influence your growth and development. Again, as we've been covering throughout all the other verses. If there's anything foolish, people in your life that are immoral, you try and talk with them about good things and they laugh in your face. These are people that don't want to learn anything. You know, you tell them about your dreams, your ambitions, and they bring you down. They mock you. They talk you out of it. After you hang around these friends, you feel stupid. You feel like you've lost brain cells. 
You can't have open, deep intellectual conversations with them because their friendship with you is superficial. Cut ties with those people and instead go in the way of understanding. Seek mentorship, seek help. Surround yourself by better people, wiser people. Learn from them, okay? That's what you wanna be doing. And it's interesting with all these verses, it's just telling you to just stay away from immoral people. Don't even, don't even go near them, right? Segregate yourself, right? Wink, wink. Ninth verse, getting close to the end here now. 2 Timothy 3.5 3, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. If you go into the full verse on this, it gives you a whole list of avoiding people that appear to be, you know, all all goodly, godly, all saint-like, but they're not. Because there are people who, at the end of the day, we're all made in God's image. And these people reject the gift of Christ. They reject the Holy Spirit. They reject truth. And because of that, they're not safe to be around until they, they're restored through faith alone in Christ. From such people, turn away. This can go for a woman you meet, and she's a bit, you can see there's like some narcissism there. There's that Jezebel spirit type thing where she looks all sweet and innocent. And as you get to know her, she's a feminist. She's modernized. She doesn't want to know God. It doesn't tell you to try and fix or change her. It says, turn away. Your friends that behave a certain way in public, when they're around in a group setting, but in private, they're different with you. From such people, turn away. Stay away from individuals who maintain a facade. They're faking it. They pretend to be godly and sweet and all righteous. But they lack, you know, you could say that genuine, that spiritual power. They, they, they lack truth. They, they lack being authentic. They're not genuine. They're two-faced. Avoid relationships with people that you see that are superficial and vain. Be very careful. On the outside, they appear to be all this. But on the inside, they're not. I just made a video recently on YouTube to encouraging men to avoid women that have a lot of plastic surgery. You know, a lot of these women, they'll wrap themselves up, they'll package themselves up nicely, but they have a lot of wounds, a lot of insecurities inside. They're not safe to be around. I would say no different than for the ladies. If you meet a man and he's talking about how much money he makes, how successful he is, he's talking about his achievements, run. That guy's insecure. Godly people do not boast. If it's genuine, right? There's no need. Stay away from these people. Even you guys, your friends. If you're around, if you have a, one of your buddies who's always talking about himself, about what he's going to do, and he's always, you know, puffing himself up in a prideful way, be very careful with people like that. They're not open to correction. Avoid them. That's all it's telling you. Run. Because it's very important to have people in your life that are authentic, that are sincere. If they're not truthful, how can you have a genuine conversation? How? <laughs> it's not happening. And finally, Proverbs 1, verse 10 through 15. My son, if sinners entice you, don't consent. My son, walk not in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. When you have these people in your life with that peer pressure, come on, Jimmy. I know you quit alcohol a few weeks ago, but come on. Come on out with us this Friday night. Hey, Jimmy, I know you've got a girlfriend now and you're all serious about getting married with her, but why don't you cheat on her? There's other girls. Come out to the club with us this weekend. We're having a guy's trip. Come out with us, bro. You need to avoid those people. Stay away from men like that. If they try and entice you, it says don't even consent to it. Don't fall to peer pressure. The best way is to avoid those people. Exercise caution in choosing friends and associates. Avoid relationships that lead to a compromise or moral downfall. You see, it hap you see stories happen all the time, even with women, right? They settle, maybe they're with a husband they don't really love. Next thing you know, some female co-worker convinces her to go out. She cheats on the husband. Oh, I feel really bad. Ruined the marriage. Guys do it too. You get some bad friend talking in your ear, trying to convince you to step out on your wife or to step out on your girlfriend. 
and you listen to the guy and next thing you know you've ruined your relationship these things happen oftentimes they're not you have to guard your heart against immoral people and from these bible verses these 10 verses that i've mentioned my final thoughts on this are clear from these passages in scripture the common theme is to prevent and if possible avoid any of the negative consequences that come from intertwining your life with immoral people by outright cutting ties as soon as warning signs appear and if possible to walk away from them by minimizing their ability to harm you drag you down with them or to lead you astray and the only way you're ever going to stop this from happening is the moment you see something immoral with someone that raises alarm bells you just need to avoid them you need to distance yourself that is the only way to protect yourself because there's a lot of wicked people out there it's sad but there's evil people it could be your friends i'm not saying be paranoid right after watching this video but give yourself an audit and assess the people in your life raise your standards because gentlemen you got you if you can't even choose great friends hey you can choose a good woman right <laughs> or vice versa if you don't have a godly woman in your life hey how are you going to choose good friends you know it's like when you go back when you were a little kid and there was a friend that wasn't good for you your parents would always tell you at least they told me i don't like that boy i don't trust him next thing you know the friendship breaks away that kid was screwed up in the head or something was wrong with him right it's like when you have a good woman in your life and she starts telling you i don't trust that friend of yours i don't trust that family member i don't be careful with that guy be careful with that client be careful with that customer be careful with that co-worker good women have that intuition and they'll protect you they'll help you and then they're right right so with certain people it's good you know it's good to have good people in your life as it says he that walketh with wise men is wise you want to have good people in your life that can counsel you that can mentor you that can assist you when you're down bad that you know they have good morals and they're genuine they're going to help you but what happens to you when you're all alone something bad happens and all your friends are scumbags this is why you hear stories of oh my best friend um and my girl ran off together some of you people even get to that point and i know because i have emails of guys who send me stuff like this it's like you're blind to it you're so dysfunctional you're so blinded that your girlfriend or your wife would be cheating on you with a friend of yours from childhood and it's like how does it get to this point some of you have no self-awareness you need to snap yourself out of it and wake up and really give yourself an audit to assess the quality of people you have in your life don't be fooled by immoral wicked people instead choose good people to be around and your life might be just a little bit better i hope you found value in the video i'd love to hear your thoughts down below maybe send this to someone who need help who needs help and with that said i hope you'll have a wonderful day god bless all of you and your families and remember when it comes to immoral people the only and the best way to deal with them is to avoid them